I just, I still do. It keeps going through my mind, like, how did this happen? I went out and, you know, destroyed my truck. But I don't know why I did that. Uh, he was having difficulty controlling his uh, behavior. His behavior was becoming more impulsive. And the doctor there on the second day told us that he was uh, manic depressive bipolar. There were so many other things going on in my life at that period that they attributed it to depression. They just kept saying it's too much stress. You know, you're probably going through menopause. You know, you need more sleep. We'll give you more drugs. So we started out with the whole depression theory. Um, it took a very long time for her to finally say, it's not depression, it's something else. Then I'm thinking, oh, has he had a stroke? Because he's losing his ability to speak. We had no clue, no clue what was going on. We had no diagnosis. We didn't know what we were seeing. It wasn't Alzheimer's, but it was something that took their memories away, especially their short-term memory. This doctor diagnosed me with probable FTD. It was so much of a relief because of the various doctors we'd been to, and it was worth every penny to find out what the heck I had. You look at somebody's brain and you're able to say that this part of the brain is working and this part isn't, and that's why you have the symptoms that you have. Um, I think it's a big comfort to people to know that there's an actual explanation for what, what, they're, what they're feeling. We're seeing now uh, many, many more people affected by aging-related degenerative conditions of the brain. One uh, group estimated that roughly 250,000 people in the United States are affected by FTD right now. Frontotemporal dementia is the second most common dementia after Alzheimer's disease, particularly in individuals under the age of 65. FTD is a condition that affects younger folks. You can uh, tell the difference between frontal temporal dementia and Alzheimer's disease with great certainty with a PET scan, and especially in cases where it's challenging um, uh, clinically. If we look and take a section through the brain, approximately here, that encompasses both portions of the frontal as well as temporal lobes, we can take a section of the brain like that, oriented approximately like this, and then look more closely at the structures in the brain. These conditions are um, due to the accumulation of, of proteins in our brain that um, are no longer metabolized normally. And you can think of the proteins as clogging up the brain cells. And because they clog up the brain cells, they make the brain cells um, uh, atrophic. As they get smaller, it interferes with brain cell functioning, and eventually the brain cells die. So tau was identified as a key player in FTD. We don't know why it begin to accumulate in the cell body of nerve cells, but they do. You, you can think about a gene like a recipe. The gene tells the body how to make a certain type of protein. So when you hear someone talking about the tau protein, the tau protein is made by the tau gene. And there's a change in the gene that's causing the protein to either not be made correctly, or it can't read the recipe at all and no protein gets made. These changes are usually inherited. Uh, they're inherited down through the, through the family, uh, from parent to child, to, through the generations. We knew that at some point that there was a probability that it was something that was being passed down. For each of the family members that I've seen, which is about eight or 10 now, uh, it, it's almost like clockwork. And the irony is that each of them present differently. When an individual that has a gene mutation has a child, there's a 50% chance that they'll pass on the copy of the gene that carries the mutation. There's a lot about FTD we, we know, and there's a lot about FTD we don't know about. Probably 50 to 80% of familial FTD, we still haven't found the genes. The more we understand about the proteins that cause disease, the more we understand about the genetics that relate to those proteins, the more we're going to understand why these diseases occur and what we can do to stop them. So the ultimate goal is to have something that prevents a person from getting one of these, these diseases before the damage actually starts. The more that the patients and their family members are involved in the research process, they're going to uh, play a really important key in helping us understand why FTD occurs. 
their involvement by taking part in clinical trials, overall research studies, brain imaging, all that information is going to come together and give us really the, you know, the tools we need, the information we need to hopefully develop a cure.